So the majority of yesterday's video, we were looking at parts and holes and real life examples of parts and holes. And for most of the examples, you could estimate, well, about how many of this part goes in that hole and you could kind of order fractions without actually being able to put a number onto them. Well, today we're gonna to move on from there by looking at fractions of shapes. Now, for some of the fractions of shapes, you'll still need to estimate, but for some we're gonna be able to work out exactly, and for others, and we'll dig into this, we'll be able to use logic to work out the value of different pieces. So it's really gonna develop your understanding of, of fractions, building from what we've already done, so can't wait to get going. You're gonna find it really useful. So I thought we'd start with a little recap from yesterday, um, and yesterday's task. We, we had this one, order the fractions from smallest to largest. Well, I thought a fingernail as a fraction of the human would be the smallest. Because where would you even start thinking how many fingernails fit inside of a human is the same, is the same size? Um, then I thought the fin as a fraction of a shark. I didn't think it's as small as a finger, fingernail as a fraction of a human, but this is a very small part of a, of a shark, of, of the whole shark. Then I would go for the trunk as a fraction of an elephant, because this is a, a relative size of, of an elephant. I mean, it's way less than half, obviously. I, I would think it's, it's probably less than a tenth, but I don't think it's quite as small as the fin of a, as a fraction of a shark. And then our largest, I would say, is the wings as a fraction of a butterfly. Um, apart from our, the human fingernail, I think the wings would be the smallest, the next smallest thing. But as a fraction of a butterfly, I could say more than half. So this one is actually our largest fraction. Um, now, a similar principle then was this, uh, I think this was task A, part C, which is the larger fraction? Um, and it's not confusing which is the larger part with which is the larger fraction. So you might think this blue part is bigger than this red part, which of course it is. But then if we, if we look at the blue part as a fraction and I break this shape into equal parts or uh, approximately equal parts with as accurate a drawing as I can, we could see that that part looks like it's about one sixth of the whole and it's a comparison of this part to the whole uh, and again if we look at this at this red part we could say well what fraction is this this and this piece look about the same the white and the red there so if I put another line in the, about there that should split the shape approximately to equal parts I think that one is slightly smaller than that one actually with my line um, but helping to show that this looks like it's it's approximately a quarter and so making this one the larger part because of its comparison to the whole. Um, and then the last one that I wanted to have a look at was, was this one, which is quite a complex one, I thought. Um, so for each rectangle, estimate the fraction that is blue. Um, so I've got to think, well, about how many of this part would fit inside of the whole? So I'm gonna try and split this into approximately equal parts. Um, so they look about equal sizes. How many parts? There's five parts, so it's a fifth. Now, one little observation that I would make here is that this part, this fifth, is slightly larger than this part here. Um, now, my guess here is that this one, therefore, will be about a sixth. Um, and so let, let's have a look. Equal parts, I'm going to try and make them what looks roughly about equal to me. Of course, if I want to be more accurate, I would measure them with a ruler. Um, and how many parts do we have there? We have got six parts, so five sixths, because five of those six parts are blue. Um, then let's have a go. Th this, this one here, really a challenging one here. The way that I thought about this was let's get a, a, a part that's about equal to that one. What about there? Something like that. And then, um, so, and then if I add up this bit and this bit here, I think that's about the same size as each of these parts. So if I consider this one part here, two parts there and put those together to make three equal parts um, and I've got one of them that's blue so I'm gonna say I think that one's about a third blue and um, about three of this piece would fit into the hole um, now here I'm actually gonna start here this was is quite a challenging one because you can't just kind of count up in either the blue or the white parts um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split the smaller part into into two um, this white part here so and then work out well how many of these approximate parts go in the blue one so let's have another one there another one there so to me it looks like it's around about uh, two fifths that are white and three fifths that are blue and hopefully that kind of breaks down the thought process behind answering these questions so let's try and extend this understanding 
Have a look at these three examples and I want you to order the fractions. Which fraction's larger? The amount of this uh, square that's blue, the amount of this rectangle that's red, or the amount of re this rectangle that's green? Order the fractions from smallest to largest. Pause the video and have a go. You might not be able to name them, how big they are, but I think you could order them. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, I'm going to start with the one that I think is the largest. I think that the largest fraction is the green one, um, because I think the green one is the only one that's more than half. Uh, I, I think it's just about more than half of this uh, rectangle is green, whereas I think it's less than half of this rectangle, a fair bit less than half is blue. So I think the next one is this one. Whereas the red one, ah, that's quite a lot less than half. In fact, I think you could get maybe four, maybe about a quarter of those red strips would fit into the hole, something like that. So I would order those in that way. Now, we're going to look at fractions of shapes. A lot of what we've looked at so far has been understanding this relationship between a part and the whole and how many of the parts fit in the whole. And that's what we're going to continue to do when we're looking at fractions of shapes. It's just in many more of these examples, we can work out an exact fraction rather than just an estimate. But hopefully being able to estimate maybe even is a more challenging skill and will lay the foundation for what we're looking at today. So let's say we're looking at this shape and we're saying what fraction of this shape is orange? Um, and I think that what we would do is we would look at, well, how many of those parts do we have? They're all equal parts. How many are there in total? And then we could name that fraction. So it's four sixteenths, we might say, because I've got four parts out of a total of 16 and they're all the same size. Now, if I change the shape like this and change the image like this, hopefully you'll recognize it's actually still four sixteenths, even though I can't see 16 pieces. Because I've just got to find a way of describing how many of these parts fit in the whole. And the thing that hasn't changed there are the parts that are orange or the size of the whole shape. It's just that I've not split it up into so many pieces that I can see. And there I can see it's still four sixteenths. Now, you might also have thought immediately, actually, it's just a quarter. I could describe this as a quarter. If, for example, you visualize these two pieces moving over here and we fill these two in here, I could maybe see it's one strip out of two, three, four. Or maybe you look at each of the rows and say, I've got one out of four there, one out of four there, one out of four there, and one out of four there. So overall, there's a quarter of it is orange. Now, equally, you could see this as two eighths. Uh, and I'm going to change this image now to show it the most, almost the most comfortable way, I might say, of, of seeing it as being, and visualising it as being two eighths. I could just change the image slightly and we can kind of see it now in eight pieces and recognise that we have two of them. So lots of different ways that I might visualise and, and see that. Now, here's a common mistake. So again, we know that the fraction here is a quarter. I'm going to give it in its simplest form. A quarter of this shape is orange. And I could visualise that by moving this piece in here and it's one of, of what would be four equally sized strips if I drew them on. A common mistake is this. There is two sevenths as orange as there are seven pieces, two are coloured. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and of course we've unpicked why. They're not equally sized pieces. If they were cut into equally sized pieces and I was to think how many of these pieces fit in the hole, it is a quarter. I'm hoping that's going to help you with this example here. So for these three examples, true or false, is this a fifth? Is this five eighths that's blue? And is this three eighths that's blue? Pause the video and have a go. And just like I try and do often, I've put some pictures to that. So let's see if we can understand that. So the first example, a fifth, no, it's, it's actually an eighth. Because this part, how many of that part would fit in the hole? Actually, a size of this, a piece of this size, sorry, you would fit eight of them in the hole. And five eighths, I could see, I, I could think it is, because it's like this is one, uh, one half, sorry. And it, it might look like this is an eighth, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But of course, that is just an eighth of this half, if you like. Now, if I put the, the whole shape and put it into 16 equal pieces, then I would have eight pieces there and another one there. I've got nine sixteenths, but not five eighths. Because this piece isn't a, a the size of an eighth. Can you see this is the size of an eighth here? Or it would be two of them to be another eighth. Uh, the last image, yeah, that is three eighths. Because if I broke this piece up here, it'd be like one, two, three. And then the other parts I could put into equal eighths. So that one is three eighths. Okay, another challenge for you here. 
Uh, so read the picture. Which fractions do you see? So have a look at any of those coloured sections. How many of them can you give a, an exact fraction for, for, for its size? And just to make the point that this is the exact middle of the square. Uh, pause the video. I wonder how many you can find. Okay, and let's have a look at them. I'm going to put a picture next door to this one. Um, so uh, to help me to see that this section is a quarter. Can you see it's like it's like this it's piece here for of that size. So that will be a quarter. Um, then I would perhaps go next for the, the green. And I know that this is a quarter because, again, I, I've cut the shape up with, in diagonal lines. And I can see that that is one. It's slightly hard to visualize that as one of one quarter, one of four equally sized pieces. Um, then if I put extra lines in, can you see I've created essentially this eighth uh, here. I've got eight pieces the same size here. Uh, so that's an eighth. Um, now there's a few ways I can work out the size of this light blue section. I could see it as the same as this quarter add this eighth. Can you see here that's like the same size as a quarter and that's the same size as the eighth. I could look at it here as one, two, three eighths there. Or what I could do is think, well, it is all the rest of the shape. So I could add up a quarter and a quarter and an eighth and think it's one, subtract a quarter and a quarter and an eighth. Um, but that leaves us with three eighths. OK, I want to finish with this and I'm calling this making a deduction. So if I was asked, well, what fraction of this square is green? and I'm given how much is blue and how much is yellow, it is possible to work out how much is green, even though this piece, I can't really visualize how many of this piece would fit in the hole. Uh, and it's actually just the idea that I can work out how much less than one hole it is. It is a, a section of a quarter and a section of an eighth less. So once I can work out these values and I know these values exactly, that means I also know exactly the fraction of the green section. Uh, pause the video and work out what is that section? OK, let's see. Well, the process for breaking that down, I would actually just first of all try and get the fractions into. Um, so there's a common denominator and show that a an eighth and two eighths um, are the pieces that I have. So two eighths is the same as one quarter. It's like two sections of this size. Um, and so then I know the rest of the shape is green. Um, so that must be exactly five eighths. So to find your tasks, click on that blue link underneath the video. Uh, we've got a task A and a task B, which are completely different from one another. So this is task A. So first of all, which of those shapes are three quarters blue? And then have a look there. Which of has the which of these shapes has the larger fraction that's shaded? The larger fraction that's orange out of these two. Um, and then have a go at these ones that shade a quarter of those shapes. I'd love to know which did you find easier, which did you find harder? Um, then to move on to task B. I love task B. Um, so have a look at this. So the red dot is in the middle of this square. So what fraction of this square is blue and how do you know? Uh, and then to move your thinking forward, have a go at parts B and C. So for part B, this is an attempt to answer this main question and it's been done incorrectly. But what's incorrect about it? It seems to make sense. And then for an extension for part C, um, what fraction of each of these two shapes is shaded? So what fraction of this shape is shaded? What fraction of that shape is shaded? How can you link the first task, ta part A, to part C to help you with that? Uh, the answers are underneath. Um, and as ever, we're moving forward again tomorrow. It's been brilliant having you involved. Thank you so much. Hope it's been really helpful. See you back tomorrow.